watched the Nintendo Direct, and I have some pros and I have some cons, and I have some what the heck is that? Because it's confusing moments. But in today's video, I'm gonna go over my thoughts on the Nintendo Direct of February 9th, 2022. Let's get it. What is going on, guys? Jim here with a video today. Go over the high points, the midpoints, the low points, and the what the heck was that kind of confusing moment kind of points. But uh, let's get started. Um, before we get started with today's video, guys, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, like this video and let's get started so a brief summary about the nintendo direct before we get started it was 40 minutes long exactly 40 minutes long i, I really think it was exa exactly 40 minutes long it featured all the games between now and september it said it was six months meaning like the first half but you know it's it's still good to see more games being announced and they did say that this was going to feature a ton of different type of games and they were right but there are some weird ones in here. And let's get started with the high points. The stuff I like the most. The stuff that really caught my eye. And the stuff that I think is really going to succeed in the long run. Number one, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. You already know that Kirby and the Forgotten Land is coming out in March of this year. So next month, the 25th of March. Uh, I'm very excited for that game. The reason why I'm mentioning this game is because they showed off these amazing copy abilities. Seen here, some pictures right here. And then Kirby can swallow a car? So Kirby went from back in the day in Smash Brothers and older games to swallowing little Waddle Dees to he's swallowing cars now. What's he gonna swallow jets next? Yeah, he's gonna swallow jets next. No, but seriously, I think it's really cool that they're adding more mechanics to the game. So we have, we used to have the copy ability, which they're bringing more and more of it. I think the really new addition is the kind of Planet Robobot feeling. The game of the 3DS, the game you see right here. That kind of mechanic, it felt like they added to the game with swallowing a car, uh, turning into like blowing bubbles. It, it it's really adds Kirby's magic to the game. It really makes Star Allies wonder what it was doing for itself. I, I like Star Allies. But this looks like kind of a Mario Odyssey sort of Kirby game, an adventure game. And I know it's probably not going to be as good, but I cannot wait till this game comes out next month. Another high point is Mario Strikers Battle League. Now, this is pretty much, I would say, the sequel to the 2007, 6, 5, you'll see on the screen, this game. The Wii game that was really fun on the Wii. It was very underrated, and it, it was just so much fun. It's, it's pretty much soccer, and um, they pretty much made a game out of it. So we had the tennis one on the Switch, we had the golf one, and now we're getting the uh, soccer one, and this is probably the one I'll play the most of. This looks really cool. They didn't really go too much into it. It comes out in June, so we'll hear probably more about that, maybe a smaller direct, but that, that looks promising. Up next, Splatoon 3 finally got its release window and it's coming out in summer of 2022, which is literally this summer. Now, they did talk about something called Splatoon 3 Salmon Run and I think it's more of the single player stuff or the co-op stuff you do together. Kind of like a horde mode, I think it's called, what you call them, like, you know, waves of enemies. I think they were really showcasing that, but the game is coming out. There was no real footage besides that, but I'm definitely pumped to see Splatoon come out sometime this summer another high point is a really underrated high point is the klonoa trilogy one and two i think it's the only two of them they're from the wii they're very cool adventure games they're really uh really hard to find on the wii i just see some prices here i don't know if they're the same as i'm saying but these games really took the wii by storm they were expensive and they they were hard to obtain but those games are coming to the switch and if you don't get these on day one they could really jack up in price quickly so definitely consider getting these games if they're not just eShop games they come out in the summer of this year oh here's an amazing one speaking of mario striker which i was talking about a little bit ago this one blows it out the water we have not wii sports resort 2.0 kind of we have nintendo switch sports the successor to wii sports and wii sports resorts we have any new New sports game. We're not going to talk about the Wii U one. We're going to skip that one out. But this is literally big. The Joy-Cons are going to be used big. There's going to be motion controls that are going to be really utilized well. We saw the volleyball being showcased briefly on the Nintendo Direct. That was really, really good to see how accurate that was. And then I really think that the sport choices were really good. You have bowling. I mean, that's a huge, huge thing to get into the Nintendo Switch. The bowling. Bowling is always fun. Um, you have badminton. You have tennis. You have volleyball. 
You have so many sports. You'll see all six on the screen. But then you have a free update of golf. So they're taking care of the players who want to play this game. And they're making a free off a free add-on. That's awesome. So that is that. Switch gears a little bit. Cuphead. Cuphead is one of the Dark Souls type of games. Uh, it came it came out a couple years ago, and Cuphead is a it, it's it's really good. It brings back like the uh, 60s style cartoons into like a video game for today, and it it's difficult. It's very difficult. And the DLC um, is coming out in the summer, so definitely stay tuned for that. It's a high point as well. Metroid DLC, Metroid Dread. I played a little bit of Metroid Dread, and I can tell you right now, that game is phenomenal. I loved what I played of that game, and for them to add rookie mode to help people out, that because the game is really hard, and to add something called Dread mode, which is even harder than the other game, but then, in April, but those modes come out today, but then, later, in April, they're coming out with a boss rush mode, similar to a Zelda game. Can't wait for that. All right, so the last two things on my positive side of this direct, we're going to start with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Okay, now a lot of people know me pretty well saying I cannot get into that series. I recently picked up Xenoblade Chronicles Remaster, and I've been getting more and more into it. And I really think it's a really hidden, it's a kind of a, a um, acquired taste. You have to like that kind of game. So... I think having one and two on the Switch makes perfect sense to have three on the Switch. So in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, very briefly shown, but it's coming out in September of this year. And that was a big surprise considering that's not the first half of the year. But still, it is still cool to see a game come out that is a little bit away. But it's not come out next year or even later later this year, which is crazy. So that is a high point as well. And this is probably the highest point, one of the highest points on this Direct and it is Mario Kart 9? No, not Mario Kart 9 because that's not in development right now. We don't know anything about Mario Kart 9. It's not on the Direct. Mario Kart 9 was not mentioned in a single peep. But Mario Kart 8 is getting a crazy, I mean crazy amount of DLC. They're really amping this game up to where it stays alive for years to come. Guess what? There's going to be six waves. The Mario Kart courses are going to go all the way until 2023. And let me tell you right now, you get eight courses for each pack. As you see right here, there are eight courses in the first pack. And there are six. Eight times six is 48. 48 courses added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So if you thought the Mario Kart races were getting kind of stale, which no, no never gets stale because that game is just, that game is awesome. So much fun. When they added uh isabel and um link and stuff and they didn't really add too many courses uh, did they even have courses from the wii i don't or the wii u i forget but this is big these courses are just not regular courses these are remaster courses from all the games you see here and i cannot wait to see coconut mall once again from the wii that is coming out starting in march all the way through 2023 okay so you're like jim that's a good show it's time for the midpoints not low points, but the midpoints. All right, so Fire Emblem Three Hopes, like Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is coming out in June. And the only reason why it's a midpoint is because I just cannot get into the Dynasty Warriors kind of games. I know they're getting better and better. Like Persona Strikers is a great game. Don't get me wrong. But I would lean more towards the Hyrule game and Persona game versus the Dynasty Warrior games and Fire Emblem. But... Maybe I'll get into it one day, but that was a midpoint for me. Another midpoint is Triangle Strategy. Uh, I just, Octopath Traveler, not a big fan of that game. So that didn't really appeal to me too much. Can't really go much into that as well. And uh, new Switch Online games added. Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings is pretty cool. I uh, didn't grow up with these games, so it's definitely going to be probably why it's more a midpoint. Not a low point, but these games uh, were the only two announced for the Nintendo Switch Online. But the Mario Kart stuff obviously just blew that out of the water in my opinion, but that is a midpoint. So pretty much Earthbound isn't bad by any, by any means. I know it's not, but it's definitely just a midpoint in my opinion. And then we get to the low points and you're probably like, that wasn't a lot of midpoints. There's a lot of low points to this direct. We're gonna start out with the crazy amount of third party games like the Ezio collection, Gundam, bunch of games on the screen you see here. These games did not appeal in the slightest to me. I just, if you wanna play Ezio collection, if you thought it was bad on consoles like PS4 or PS4 and Xbox One, 
you're probably in for a disaster waiting to happen when you see these graphics. I mean, it's not the greatest looking game to begin with, so that's that. But yeah, so all these third party games, they just don't appeal to me. Front Mission 1 Remake, never liked Front Mission back in the day, it's just not my ty st style of game. And probably people are going to be like, you don't like this game? Advance War 1 and 2, just not my kind of game. Uh, that's all I can say, it's just definitely not my type of game. It looks... Like, a lot of people would like it, though. It's probably an acquired taste once again, but it's definitely not my acquired taste, if that makes sense. Okay. Let's talk about what I'm completely confused by. Why is Kingdom Hearts... Let me, let me, let me go back a little bit. Why is Kingdom Hearts, which we already knew this, a cloud game? You have to have online to play this. You're pretty much streaming this game. Not like streaming it on Twitch. You're streaming it like PlayStation Now or some other program. It, I can't get enough of that, and I didn't even... Um, that just that doesn't make any sense. So that is confusing. Another confusing thing is the Tyco Drum game is gonna add 500 songs, which is really cool. It's a subscription service, just like Just Dance. How much is it gonna cost? And will it be worth it? And is this Tyco Drum game the same same game as the one on the eShop? Very confused by that one. Also confused by Live a Live, Live Alive. Could not understand what that was. So very confused by that one. MLB The Show 2022. You should have just stayed on the PlayStation. Xbox, I understand a little bit. That game was a huge, huge hit on the PlayStation for years. When I saw it go to Xbox, I was confused, but now I am downright completely out of my mind confused. It's on the Switch, and it it's not going to run right. I'm sorry. It's not meant for it. And the last game I'm really confused by, and I'm not even upset about this game in a way, is Disney Speedstorm. Disney Speedstorm is pretty much the Disney Infinity racing add-on equivalent to a full-length game. Is it a full-length game, though? It's not. It's actually a free-to-play game, and I don't know. I'm conflicted on that one, because one on one half, I'm like, they'll, add, they'll, 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 make, they'll drag you in. They'll add Disney races. They'll add Disney characters. They'll add so much uh, costumes, and it'll be worth it. On the other hand, I'm like, why can't they just make this as a game? Like, a regular game you can just pop in your system or buy on the eShop and just play. Like, it's pretty much going to be gone once the servers end, if that makes sense. It's it's pretty much online only at this point. So, uh, or worse, honestly. But, uh, like, DC online on the PlayStation, like, that kind of thing. But it's okay, because I'm still going to be dragged into it, because Nicole and I love Disney. But, yeah, that's that. All right, so, that is my highs, midpoints, low points, and completely confused by. But, what's next? What's missing? What was missing from this Direct? A lot. And I'm going to just go quickly through this. No mainline Mario game. Uh, no Zelda Breath of Wild 2 uh, information. Uh, no Donkey Kong information. And no Pokemon information. Which, of course, I mentioned Pokemon because Nicole and I have a decent po a decent following on the Pokemon channel, which is in the description below. Uh, Pokemon, it seems, has its own directs now. So that makes sense. Let's be honest. Overall, this direct was pretty positive. Uh, I would give this a B. I'll give this a B, um, an 8 out of 10. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to give it a 9 or 10 is because it was missing a lot of... It had a lot of mid and low and confusing points, but the high points outweighed it for the most part. Let me know in the comment section below, did you enjoy this Direct or did you not enjoy it? Or did you, did you just don't like Nintendo and you like PlayStation and Xbox? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, uh... Stay tuned, I'll be doing more gaming videos later this week. Ooh, that was a 40-minute direct, and I summed it as best as I could. And uh, what's next, Nintendo? What is next? That's a real question, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.